Trinity. It can be an overused word at times. But what does it mean? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to me? What does it mean to us here at QMUL? It can sound cliche, and I think that's why it was challenging for me at first to think about what I wanted to say here today. I thought to myself, what could I say? What could I say that has not already been said about the word community? What could I say that was not so overused, so cliche, so common? Interestingly, the latter expression of common is the root word, the etymology of community. But we'll come back to why I think that ought to change in the context of Queen Mary. First, let's begin with first impressions since they do come first. For me, it was not only my first day at this university, but my first day on this campus, my first day in East London. I had visited London before, a few years ago with my parents, but I had seen nothing like QMUL. We went to Madame Tussauds, we went to the Natural History Museum, we were tourists. So perhaps it's fitting that as a resident, my sight seemed more stark, the shock was more pronounced than it would be to somebody who's familiar with the area but maybe not. As a Pakistani-born Canadian, I had seen men in long robes and Muslim prayer caps on TV, usually in the news pertaining to the Middle East, or uh, video footage of Mecca during Islamic holidays. But here at QMUL, this is a common sight. A few steps further into the core of the campus, and I discovered a cemetery a Jewish one. A few steps further and I was at Library Square where I witnessed open Muslim prayers. A few steps further and I entered my first law class where I encountered judgments from centuries ago until today dominated by white male judges. Of course, a lot is being said about the judicial diversity in the realm of judicial appointments, um, and QMUL encourages such discussions, conversations, and explorations. But these seemingly juxtaposed and contrasting symbols of ideals, upon which various wars are based and are very real today in the world, as I'm sure you must see in the news, I could not help but smile. This coexistence was beautiful. I felt entranced. I felt a great sense of pride. I wanted to protect this diversity, accepting it by giving it a home. So QMUL2 is a home to them all. But there's a friction here, something I not only saw but increasingly felt as I continued my first year here. There is a simultaneous sense of association and disassociation within QMUL and QMUL within London. For example, QMUL promotes its international student body. I belong to it. I, used to, I came from Canada. I study here, as do many students. So in a sense, it associates itself with this image of this international student body, this international hub. Also. There are various legal advice centers here, not only at the university, but there's also one in nearby Bethnal Green that are very much centered in, in helping everyone and anyone. But then there's this disassociation where, especially at the School of Law here at Queen Mary, we belong to a very prestigious group called the Russell Group. Um, many other universities belong to this group as well, such as Cambridge and Oxford. And in London, there's this constant discourse of boasting one's eliteness. 
which is reflected, I think, in the ideologies of some of the recent politicians, as you must all be aware, that have an emphasis on immigration control, implying that they, the other, are the problem, not us. The thing is, is that disassociation seeks to point out the uncommon. This is where you see enhanced the Muslim prayer caps, the long robes, the Jewish names on cemetery tombstones. On a macro level, this is where our government, in practicing and exercising their prerogative powers, exiles an entire population off the Chagossian Islands, for example, in the Bankhold case, where they gave the island to the U.S. as a military base, implying in their actions that although the land belongs to Britain, the people do not. This disassociation leads to what Edward Said and his theory of Orientalism called othering which paints a distorted image of what he referred to as the Orient. I remember learning um, Orientalism during my year of exchange that I did in Nice, France, and I learned how the Eurocentric, wireistic eye witnesses the Orient. And they see it as this big region of exoticism, making little to no distinctions between large regions such as Asia and the Middle East. Perhaps this is similar to the way the world tends to talk about Africa, not bothering to make distinctions because in the discourse of us, they will always be the other. But then this makes me think about my own culture and the increasing radicalization that I see within cultural groups. Why people I know don't feel the need to express themselves religiously or culturally when they return to their ethnic homeland, but they do here. I wonder if more than defensiveness and self-preservation, if the Orient, in Said's terminology, have begun to see themselves as the Occident does onto them. If having recognized their otherness, they have internalized the subjugation of non-acceptance and not quite belonging. It is here that I come back to when I first began talking about what it means to be a community. My fiance and I are obsessed with finding out where things come from, you know, etymologies and roots and cultural contexts. And I think this reflects, in a sense, the fact that I come from a diaspora. I belong to a diaspora, a dual identity, where I'm Canadian, but not quite. I'm Pakistani, but not quite. And not somewhere in the middle either, just an encapsulation of a range of identities that are morphed and melanged together into what I see as my existence today, which is not static either. It continues to evolve and change as I do as a person. So when I looked up the word community, it said that it came from an old French and Latin word um, signifying common or commonness. I remember as an amateur uh, theater student, I really wanted to be an actor, um, and I would research the character and I wanted to know how, how the character felt in every scene. I wanted to be so connected to the character, you know, that everybody would be just blown away. Um, so I would think about it and be like, okay, in this scene, I'm really sad. Oh, I'm so sad. In this scene, I'm really angry. Oh, I'm so angry. And at this point, my theater teacher came up to me and she said, acting is exactly what the word signifies. You must act. The feeling will follow afterwards as a reaction if you get the act right. So when I discovered that the word community comes from a passive noun 
signifying common or commonness, I wanted to re-signify it. As I have constructed my own identity, as I'm sure you all do as well in this globalized world today, where there's no place for this idealized, disillusioned idealization of homogenization, I wanted my community to be an active word, a verb. In a community, I think we ought not to try and find what we have in common, but instead strive to commune. I remember the first time I felt like I really belonged here was when I was waiting for dinner on campus. And um, there's this lovely lady, and she felt really guilty about making me wait because the lasagna was undercooked, and I ate it anyways because I was very hungry. And in making me wait, she felt really guilty, so she started asking me questions about my studies. And then she told me about her daughter. She told me that she was really proud of her daughter because she was studying midwifery, and that she was a good girl because there were no boyfriends as yet. The boyfriend, she said with a wagging finger, is when the trouble starts. In that moment, I felt really intimate with her. I felt that she could trust me enough to share something so close to her heart. I felt like I belonged. I felt like an us, not a they. So that is when I started thinking about what it means to be a community. Not something passive, as its heritage suggests, common, commonness, but something more active, showing rather than passive feeling like I learned in theater. Because if we get the act right, the feeling will follow. To commune, the word to commune, means to communicate in a personal or spiritual way, to communicate intimately. In that way, I wanted my community to be an active word to commune, rather than its original etymology of common. In the words of Rollo May, communication leads to community. That is, to understanding, intimacy, and mutual valuing. Thank you so much for your time.